just trying to survive and learn to love along the way by foreplay on AO3. Episode 28, Chapter 28 of 2 a.m. Pains and Returns. The rest of the weekend passes much the same way. Izuku sleeps most of the time and passes the rest of it buried in his notebooks. He eats more than he did on the first day, slowly regaining his appetite. Things have been getting better for him, so it's no surprise when he wakes up at 2 a.m. on Monday, leg and wrist throbbing. He knew there'll be backlash from how badly his wrist ended up, but he didn't think it'd be this bad. He eyes the limp as he holds it, frowning when he spots just how swollen it is. He lays in bed for a while, trying to fall back asleep before giving up entirely. He makes a quick stop in the restroom for some ibuprofen before limping slowly to the living room and settling down on the couch. He sits there in the dark for a while before growing tired of the silence, so he turns on the TV and sets the volume low, looking for something to distract him. The pain in his leg has subsided by the time Asashi comes out and finds him on the couch. The man is frowning as he looks him over, and he looks tired. S Sorry, did I wake you? Nah, it was radio. She pawed at my face until I woke up, and she seemed worried, so I came out here to see what was going on. Oh, that makes sense. He had spotted the cat a little while ago, staring at him from the corner of the room before she disappeared. It's n nothing. You can go back to sleep, Sashi. The man eyes him warily, eyes pausing on where he holds his wrists, before turning around instead of heading to his room, and he heads to the washroom, and he took to hear him rummaging around the cabinets before he returns, holding a roll of bandages in his hands. He turns on the lamp on the coffee tied table, before sitting next to Izuku. Let me see your hand. Izuku gives him his right hand, without comment, turning his body towards Asashi as he does. He grimaces as he grabs his hand and spots the inflammation. Hisashi starts gently massaging his hand, right below where the swelling starts, and moves his way upwards. It doesn't hurt like Izuku thought it would, instead bringing relief and the slight stinging sensation. They stay like that for a while until Izuku relaxes, nearly falling asleep where he sits. Hisashi stops the motion and grabs the roll of bandages from where he had put them and begins to wrap it tightly around his hand and wrist. What is this for? Hisashi glances up in surprise. He must have thought that Izuku really was asleep. This is a compress bandage. The pressure it puts on your hand and wrist should help reduce the swelling. If the pain doesn't stop, just let me know and we'll figure something else out. Izuku just nods at the explanation, yawning. Hisashi is just finishing up when the front door quietly opens, and Shota walks in home from patrol. He pauses at the sight of them on the couch, and Izuku gives him a tired smile as he walks over. He frowns when he sees what Asashi is doing, but doesn't say anything. Just gives his husband's shoulder a light squeeze before heading towards their room, leaving the door open behind him. All right, head back to bed so you can get a few more hours of sleep before school in the morning. Asashi's voice is quiet, and Izuku heads back to his room. It takes no time to fall back asleep. Izuku wakes up a few hours later, still tired. His wrist is no longer throbbing, so he takes that as a win. He glances at the clock, telling him that it is far later than when he usually wakes up for school. So he rushes through, getting ready. He opts to leaving the bandage on his wrist today, to provide him a little extra support. He has no doubt that after last night, it will probably bother him later on in the day. Izuku opens his door and finds Asashi there, already pressed into his hero costume, hand raised to knock. Morning, listener. We thought we'd let you sleep in a little today. Izuku smiles and nods his thanks at the man, before following him into the kitchen for a light breakfast. Walking is a lot easier today, but Izuku still sighs in relief when he sees that the elevator has been repaired. They make their drive in silence, no one willing to break the peace of a quiet morning. As soon as they make it to school, Izuku is heading to class, ready to get the day started, no matter the questions he will get about last week. When he gets to the classroom, he finds many of his friends already there, chatting excitedly about how their internships went. Ida is talking to Todoroki quietly at his desk, but they both give him a small smile when they see him. Todoroki comes over to his desk when he sits and starts chatting about how her internship went. No trace of the weirdness from the other week. He's glad that they've gotten over that strange bump in the relationship. 
and he values how easy things are with her. She just finishes the funny story about Shinsa when the boy in question walks in and heads straight for them. Uraraka begs her goodbye as she turns to Sue and asks about her internship. Shota steps into the room, and it falls silent as Shinso is taking a seat behind him. I've got a short announcement before we begin class today. Nezi wants to start doing parent-teacher interviews, just like normal high schools. So those are happening tomorrow after classes. This is the information your parents will need. The man passes a stack of papers to the first, in each row, and Izuku doesn't take one. He just passes the form back automatically. By lunchtime, the whole class is talking about how parent-teacher night. They're asking each other questions about their parents, all excited to meet them. Hey, Midoriya, your mom's coming, right? It's Kaminari who asked, and their table towards to him. He could hear about his mom. Hurts his heart a little, but he can't blame Kaminari. None of them know the truth. No, she's not. Several people make sad noises at that, only stopping when Bakugo interrupts them. What? Why not, Deku? The old hag hasn't seen Auntie Inko in forever. Izuku flinches at the name of his mother. He still answers, though. Because she can't. Deku. Great. Bakugo's angry now at the lack of information. He's got his quirk active. Little explosions going off in his hands to intimidate Izuku into answering. She's in jail! It's almost a yell when it comes out. And Izuku slaps his hands over his mouth in horror as everyone stares at him. Bakugo got a look of surprise on his face. No trace of anger left. The only thought he has as he flees the cafeteria is that they all know now. They all know that something happened. And he knows that some of them are smart enough to figure it out. The ones that are won't tell the rest of them. But there are still way more people than Izuku wanted to know. So, you finally told someone? Izuku stopped at the voice and turns to find Bakugo a few feet behind him, hands shoved in its pockets. His face lacks its usual scowl, but it's pinched with something Izuku can't identify on him. Um, it got really bad after the sports festival, S so I ran away and called Aizawa-sensei for help. Bakugo has known about the abuse since the day it started. He had shown up to school with far more bruises than he left with, no one said anything, and Bakugo's bullying only got worse after that. Good. Bakugo turns and leaves at that, leaving Izuku alone in the hallway, staring after him in confusion. You're confused? I'm fucking confused. I think we're all confused here. I think this is just a confusing moment for everybody here. Okay, so chapter 29 of Hiding and Rescues. While hiding from his classmates, Izuku runs into All Might. What will come of this interaction? Rescues. Is Hitoshi gonna come in and rescue Izuku? I hope so. I, I, I hope so. Woo, 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 woo. I hope so. Also, can we talk about Bakugo for a second? Because I know in this fanfiction, Bakugo's not the one to tell Izuku to fuck off. Like, to fuck himself? Not fuck himself. <laughs> Fucking kill himself. That's it. I'm using my YouTube. I'm getting cancelled. I'm getting cancelled. I'm getting cancelled. Okay, no. Bakugo doesn't tell Izuku to kill himself, right? To, to go fucking jump off a bridge and hope for a quirk in the next life. Um, his words, not mine. Uh, so I was- Oh, fuck. That fell. So I was- At least I think this is this fanfic. I could have sworn it was this fanfic. I don't know if it's- Okay, no, it can't be, uh, somewhere better. So it has to be this fanfic, yeah. Okay. So I was wondering if, what's it called, um, that's gonna come into play a bit. Uh, it did mention that Bakugo still bullied Izuku, that Bakugo's bullying got worse, right? So what is it? Like, what the f- I'm confused. Like, Bak- are, are you good Bakugo or are you bad? Like, I think you need to pick a lane, my dude. You, you can't be both. Stop being- stop being both, alright? We already have someone who's half hot, half cold. Right? We don't need another person who's like, one second is like, yeah, I care about you. Then the next is like, I'm going to give you the cold shoulder. You know, like, uh, not even just a cold shoulder. I'm going to fucking give you a cold punch kind of thing, you know? Um, so like, B Bakugo, uh, you're sending mixed signals here. Are you good? Are you bad? Are you redeemable? I feel like you're redeemable. And the fact that Bakugo said good, I, I love that. I love that. Which is reminding me of a fanfic that I'm planning on reading. Ri writing, not reading. 
reading, no, writing, fuck. I'm very sleepy. I have my bonnet on. I'm about to fall asleep. I have work tomorrow. I sh mm. Okay, but as I was saying, as I was saying, um, it reminds me of a fan fiction where uh, Bakugo and Izuku are both being abused by Mitsuki Katsuki. Mitsuki Katsuki, what the fuck? Mitsuki Bakugo, um, you know, because I decided funny, haha, he he ha ha ha, uh, to be a bitch. I decided to be a bitch. I decided to choose um, violence, actually, very much. Yes. Anyways. As always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.